Hi, my name is Ryan, and today we're going to do some advanced troubleshooting on your Hubble tankless water heater. Before we get started, here's your list of tools required. With the power on, please verify that the unit is programmed correctly. For help, please reference our other technical videos referencing the configuration menu parameters. First, we're going to begin with turning the power off at your main panel. Then, we're going to remove the screws on the sides, the top, and the bottom, and removing the front cover on the unit. Next, we're going to verify that all the connections to the power distribution block is tight. Next, we're going to check the power supply to the unit. With the power turned on, take your digital multimeter and you're going to check from ground to L1, then L2, then you're going to check L1 to L2. You should have an appropriate voltage range on both L1 and L2. Please reference the cover on your heater for the appropriate voltage range. If there's no voltage present at either L1 or L2, please make sure you check the breakers that they are turned on. If the breakers are turned on and there's no voltage present, please consult an electrician to check the power feed to the heater. If voltage is present at L1 and L2, we're going to move on to checking the high limits. Next, we're going to check the high limit. With the power still turned on, take your digital multimeter. One probe is going to go on the metal casing, and you're going to check for voltage here. If there's no voltage at the bottom of the high limit, check the wiring back to the power distribution block. Next, you're going to check the top of the high limit. If there's no voltage present at the top of the high limit, you need to replace the high limit. If voltage is present at both the top and the bottom of the high limit, we're going to move on to checking the thermistor. Next, we're going to check the thermistors. In order to do so, you're going to need to put your unit in diagnostic mode. You're going to press the temperature up and temperature down button simultaneously, and the unit will go in diagnostic mode. You're going to take your thermometer, and you're going to go to a fixture and measure your cold water and hot water temperature. Write those down. You're going to come back to your unit and reference the inlet and outlet temperatures that your unit is reading. Compare the temperatures. If there's a significant difference in readings, we're going to move on to checking the thermistors themselves. To check the thermistors themselves, you can shut the power off. You'll need your digital multimeter with alligator clips set in ohms. The reason for the alligator clips is so that if you hold the wires with your hands, you'll get a false reading. On your control board, there are two terminal blocks. The top terminal block is your outlet thermistor. The bottom terminal block is your inlet thermistor. You're going to be removing these wires and hook them up to your alligator clips, and you're going to get an ohm reading. Please reference a thermistor chart in the O&M for your specific unit. If the readings are within range, move on to checking the flow meter. If the readings are out of range, you need to replace the thermistors. To check the flow meter, we'll need power on. You'll then set your unit in diagnostic mode. To do that, we'll press the up and down button simultaneously. The unit is now in diagnostic mode. You need to go to a hot water fixture, preferably a tub, to ensure that there's good flow rate going through the heater. Open it up and make sure your unit is registering flow. If the flow is being registered, we'll move on to checking the temperature controller. If the flow rate is reading zero, we'll move on to checking the flow meter itself. On your control board, verify that the wire from left to right is white, green, and brown. Also check for a loose connection. Next, we'll check the flow meter itself. You'll need your digital multimeter set in DC volts and no water flowing through the heater. You're gonna take your multimeter and you're gonna be checking from white to brown and you should be getting an appropriate voltage up to 9.9 .9 volts DC. Next, 
our next test will be with flow. So go to a hot water fixture, preferably a tub, to ensure that there's good flow rate, and we'll check from white to green, and you should have an appropriate voltage range of four and a half up to 9.9. .9. If the voltage is not present, please move on to replacing the flow meter itself. If all the voltage is there, we're gonna move on to checking the actual temperature controller. Now we're gonna check the temperature controller. We will need power on. You also need your digital multimeter set an AC voltage. On the top of your temperature controller, there are four terminal blocks. Please verify that the wiring goes black, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow. Next, we're gonna take your digital multimeter and we're gonna place one probe on the metal ground and we're gonna check for voltage on your first block. Next, we're gonna check and make sure that there's voltage on the second. If there's no voltage present at the first pin on the terminal block, please verify that the fuse is good and the wiring is going back to the power distribution block and there's no loose wiring. Next, we're gonna check one probe on the ground and we're gonna check the black and then we're gonna check the next black. Voltage should be present there also. If there's no voltage, again, please go back and check for the fuse or any loose wiring. The next test we're gonna do, we need to open up a hot water fixture so the unit calls for full power, preferably at a tub to ensure that there's good flow rate. You'll take your multimeter, one probe on the ground, and we'll check for voltage at the yellow, and then the next yellow, and then this. If there's no voltage present at any one of the terminals, the temperature controller needs to be replaced. Now we're gonna check the triax. To check the triax, we'll need power onto the unit and we'll also need your digital multimeter set in AC volts. We'll also need a hot water fixture open up, preferably a tub to ensure that there's good flow rate going through it and the unit's calling for full power. We'll take your digital multimeter and we'll be checking the top of the heating elements for voltage. Move on to checking the second one and the third one. If there's no voltage present at any of the top of the heating elements, you'll have to replace the triac that that heating element is hooked up to. If there is voltage present at the top of the heating element, we'll move on to checking the heating element itself. To check the heating element, we'll need a clamp-on ammeter set in AC amps and also Please reference the heating element, resistance, and amperage chart in the O&M for your unit. First, we'll have to make sure that there's a good flow going through the unit. Please turn on a hot water faucet, preferably a tub, to ensure that there's a good flow rate going through it, so the unit's calling for full power. We'll take our amp meter, set in AC amps, and we're going to clamp it after the high limit around this wire and make sure the unit's drawing amps. We're gonna go and check all three of them. The next test we're gonna do is checking the ohms for the elements. You'll need your digital multimeter set in ohms and also a screwdriver to remove the wires at the top of the elements. We're gonna remove one wire from the top and we'll take our digital multimeter probes and we're gonna place it here and here and we're gonna get an ohm reading for each of the elements. Once you finish doing one, we'll put the wire back and we'll move on going to the second and the third element. Write these values down. Please reference the chart in the O&M for a reference. If the ohms are out of spec, the heating element needs to be replaced. Another way of testing the triacs to make sure they're good is using your digital multimeter. With no flow on the unit, you're gonna take your clamp-on amp meter set in AC amps, and we're gonna check from left to right, make sure that none of the heating elements are drawing any amps on it. 
if one of the heating elements is drawing amps on it, trace it back to that triac and that triac needs to be replaced, meaning that triac is bad and it has failed. For more information, please visit HubbleHeaters.com and check out our other videos. Thank you for watching.